Greetings and salutations, citizens of the Strawberry Kingdom. It is I, the Strawberry Lord, and it is time to put all that character information onto one PDF. Now, I didn't cover this last video, which was definitely all according to plan and not at all due to an oversight. <laughs> Before we begin, this video may be optional for you. If you're using an online program, you won't need these steps. I also must state that there are many different PDFs you can use. I am using the official Dungeons & Dragons PDF, which you can find with a quick Google search or by using the link in the description. Now, you don't have to use this one, there are many others, but even if you don't, I recommend watching this video anyway, because it can still help to guide you in the process. Also, because I like seeing the funny view number go up. Lastly, I want to say that I kept the satire down to a minimum this video, and that's because this process is pretty short and simple, and I didn't want to fluff it up too much. I hope I can keep you engaged while we're here though, and I do intend to keep the satirical tone for later videos. The official PDF has three pages, so let's go over them one by one. The first page has a lot of information, but I assure you this is for good reason. These are the things you will likely need to see the most often. Let's start at the top. Your character's name goes in the top left corner. The top right corner has general information. You can see the class and level, background, race, alignment, and experience points if that's applicable. Over at this left column are the ability scores. You can write the modifiers, those are the little pluses and minuses, in either the bigger or smaller boxes, so long as you write the actual value in the other box and keep it consistent. To the right of that is your inspiration. You won't need to add inspiration when creating the sheet, but if you ever gain it during the game, maybe from bardic inspiration or a DM granting it for good roleplaying, you can write the die count you would add, or the amount of inspiration you have. At the end of the day, it's your sheet, so you can use it however you like. Below that is your proficiency bonus. This is helpful when creating the rest of your character, but it can also be used independently in a few niche scenarios while playing the game. Next up is saving throws. These values use the ability score modifiers. You will be proficient in two of your saving throws due to your class. Fill in the circle for both of those and add your proficiency to the already existing modifier. And right below that are the skills, which I've talked about briefly in the previous video. The exact same logic for saving throws applies here, except that the proficiencies can come from many different things. You can also see the original ability score they are based on in parentheses. And lastly, you might have an expertise in a skill, which allows you to double your proficiency bonus. Usually I see this written as an E being put into the circle, but again, your sheet, your rules. Next up is your passive perception, which should be 10 plus your wisdom modifier. I didn't really talk about this stat before, but it's basically the stat a stealth check works against, so you don't have to roll perception all the time. Uh, unless you're actively looking for them, then you would roll perception as per normal. Right below that are your other proficiencies and languages. You can write your proficiencies and languages here. The next column starts with your armor class, initiative, and speed. Your armor class starts at 10. Then add your dexterity modifier a modifier for your armor, and potentially for a shield if you have it equipped. Initiative is the initiative modifier, which itself is usually just a dexterity modifier, save for a few boosts from feats or magic items. The last is speed, which differs from races and can be reduced from heavy armor, but is usually 30 feet. It's worth noting that there are different kinds of speed, walking, swimming, climbing, and flying to be specific, which you may need to account for. Below that are your hit points, or your health. You'll write your max at the top, your current right below it, and any temporary hit points you gain during the game below that. Next is your hit dice and death saves. The hit dice determines how much you recover from a short rest, and the death saves determine when you survive after hitting zero hit points. Since death saves get reset once you succeed, or if you are revived post-mortem, it's not super integral to have this prepped. Next up are your attacks and spellcasting. You'll usually have the weapons you can attack with, their attack bonus, and the damage listed for each. That usually includes the unarmed strike. 
You can also put some attacking spells here if you want, though you'll see that I did not. This is because I prefer to look at a spell specific page when deciding that, but we'll see that later. Below that is your equipment, which includes everything from your weapons, armor, currency, and other extra items. On to the third and final column, we have your personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. And right below that, any features and traits your character might have. Don't worry if this section seems a bit small, there's another section later that gives you a bit more space for it if you need it. Now on to the second page! This page focuses on character traits and a few other miscellaneous things that are important in the game but don't come up as often. The top still has your character's name, but now it has their age, height, weight, eye color, skin color, and hair color listed in the top right. At the left, you'll see a part where you can draw a character appearance. I am not artsy, so I usually leave this blank, but hey, it's your sheet, so if you're artsy, or you recognize that only you will see whatever hideous abomination your pencil creates, you can draw it here. Or write it. That's not illegal. I think. Now to the right, because I am embracing my English language and reading from left to right now, are your allies and organizations, as well as a symbol if it's applicable. I have it blank since I only have allies and organizations sometimes, and this character was just drafted up for this video. As you can see, I work very hard for these videos, so much effort put into this section. On the bottom left is the backstory, the thing that is either the greatest of dreams for a DM, or the worst of nightmares. Read it, if you dare. Next up is a section for additional features and traits. See, I told you it would come back. If you watched my previous video, you'd know I never lie. And if you haven't, then there's always one way to find out. Wink wink, nudge nudge, feed me views. Ah, sorry, what came over me? Weird, must be YouTuber-itis or something. Sooner or later I'll be asking you all to like and subscribe to the channel, because only 20% of you are subscribed. The next section is the treasure section, where you might list things like gemstones or other items that are more valuable to sell than use. Personally, I find this section to not be very useful, which is why you see that I have not used it as treasure at all, but a section for additional notes, specifically for spells. We'll see those very shortly, but I pointed out to emphasize that it's okay to modify how you use your sheet for your convenience. In fact, I would actually encourage that change. Every group and even player plays a little differently, and it's probably better to adapt the sheet according to how you play as opposed to trying to restrict your playstyle based on the sheet. Now onto the third and last page, the spell page. Now for some characters, this page would be useless, but if you're a spellcaster, or even if you have a cantrip or spell from a subclass, race, or even magic item, this section might be useful. The top does not have your name! You've been deceived! Nope, this time it's your spellcasting class. Usually this is just the class you play with, though maybe in some specific multi-class scenarios it might be a different class. To the right of the class is the spellcasting ability, the spell save DC, and the spell attack bonus. The spell attack bonus is your spellcasting ability modifier and your proficiency bonus. The spell save DC is 8 plus that attack bonus. Okay, well technically it's 8 plus the spellcasting ability modifier and proficiency for you hardcore nerds out there but it gives the exact same result and I think it's easier to just do the attack bonus first and use that. Now for the spells. First, you'll see cantrips listed, or the zero level spells. Cantrips can be used indefinitely and don't need to be prepared, so you can list all the cantrips you have learned here and cast them whenever you like. The other sections are for your other level spells. There's a lot of nuance to be done here, but in general I prefer more information over less. I have every available spell listed and fill the circle for each spell prepared. That's also why I needed another section to list my available spells, so it may be easier for you to just list the prepared spells. You do you. You'll also need to list how many spell slots you have, and you'll need to write the expended slots as they're used. I have a C listed for spells with concentration, but you also might want to write information about ritual spells or spell requirements, and so on. 
Personally, I prefer to just check the spell's specific details on a separate sheet or website, but again, each player is different. I also want to address casting spells at a higher level. Some spells can be cast at higher levels, and if you have higher slots available, I strongly recommend having some indication of these higher casting spells. That might be writing it with the spell at its base level, like writing a caveat on Cure Wounds that says it can be cast at higher levels. Or it might be rewriting the spell for each level it can be cast on for an additional effect. Ultimately, that's up to you. And that's it! I know we kept the satire to a minimum this time around, but I wanted to keep things concise. Like I said earlier in the video, I intend to remain satirical for later videos. I hope my efforts made the game just a little easier for you to get into. Now I already sacrificed my satire a bit for this video, so I can't tamper with that any further without losing my satirical image, or else become an echo of who I am. So uh, le le leave, goodbye, leave, bye. Bye.